Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. My name is Ariba Shabir and we have been discussing English language teaching. So far we have covered the language in Indian context. We learn about word Englishes, received pronunciation and dialects and we also talked about the general Indian English. Later we cover the structures of the English language where we discussed phonology and morphology and we also talked about syntax and semantics. Later, we included another session in which we talked about context in second language learning. Now we are going to start another module and this module consists of the learner who aims to learn the second language and therefore this session is entitled Knowing the Learner. Before we proceed further, let us recapitulate of what we did in the last session. As I just mentioned that in the last discussion we talked about context which represents those features of a situation which pertain to the understanding and creation of meaning. We also talked about context which is a systematic construct and it incorporates a user's knowledge about the world. In addition we talked about those theories which reveal how language is used by the participants and how they make meaning in situations and events. In addition to all these things, we also studied the relationship between context and language and we also identified that uh, the relationship depends upon the focus and the purpose of communication. So as I just mentioned that we are going to talk about uh, learner, therefore after this session you will be able to relate the learner's culture and social factors with varying lessons and tasks and activities for effective learning. You will be able to identify the students interests and needs which are important for teaching English as second language. Moreover, you will be able to value what each student brings to the classroom. Moreover, you will be able to learn the challenges of a classroom and the ways to overcome. So dear learners, when we talk about the learner who aims to learn second language, then the task does not become easier for an educator, rather it becomes slightly complex. However, it is up to the teacher or you can say it is up to the educator uh, that how he or she makes his class interesting and less complicated. So first of all, look up at those features which are interesting and which are important as well to incorporate to get uh, uh, to, to incorporate in second language classroom. So as you see in this slide, the first point which is mentioned over here is knowing the learners inside the classroom. Now it's quite simple to understand that you need to understand students, you need to understand the learners inside the classroom. You can't just uh, think that a number of people, uh, you know, number of persons come into the classroom, they sit and the teacher comes and start giving lessons. No, it is entirely a different scenario. You need to understand from where do they come from, what is their background, what is their interest, why are they coming up? coming up here, what is their goal and also why are they focusing on their English language or why they have chosen you as an educator of this particular subject or for uh, learning second language. So uh, knowing the learner inside the classroom will help you to understand the class in a, a better way and also you will be able to prepare your syllabus or you will be able uh, to develop materials in a more comprehensible way. You will be able to bridge the gap between the learner and the educator. As you see the second point, it is written knowing the learners outside the classroom. 
So, uh, as I just mentioned that uh, it is not about these students who are uh, coming to the class and sitting and they are just incorporating your lessons and getting your guidelines, no. I think it is all about their extensive activities like what do they uh, prefer, what is their interest and what is their attitude or what motivates them to learn English language. It is not just about the English language but for any language there would have been some motivation of which they have been looking for. So these are the important factors which you need to understand so that uh, you can not only understand the learner inside the classroom but also outside the classroom so that your learning or your teaching material or your learning pedagogy or you can say your uh, teaching approaches uh, do not remain consigned to a specific uh, classroom but your students, your learners be able to incorporate your suggestions, your advices outside of their classrooms as well. So because uh, language is not merely a process of, uh, of, of uh, uh, memorizing rather it is about uh, a cognitive uh, thing. So, we need to understand that how we can structure up or how we can embed language in their real life situations. Now, coming up to the next point, it is mentioned that giving opportunities to the learners to express themselves freely. So, generally uh, we have seen in our language classrooms or maybe in other subjects as well that uh, learners come to the classroom and teacher take a position and starts delivering some important notes or you can say dictate some important materials and learners note those materials and they memorize it before exam and as a result in exam they start uh, putting up all those contents which they have learned in their classroom. Uh, we need to make a sharp differentiation that uh, learning a language is not restricted or it is not about memorizing. It is not about noting the notes which are being given to you in classroom. Rather, we need to change our perception that it is about including a language in our daily life, in our uh, lifestyle or in our routine. That is something which is important to consider. So, uh, it, you know, when language learners come into the classroom, they are coming up with lot of things. They are thinking to express themselves. Most of the time we see the students are unable to express themselves freely or sometimes we see that students have important takes on certain matters. But when it comes to the teacher, teacher does not provide that uh, platform. So, it is a matter of concern that uh, teachers should provide equal platform to students and that is where uh, the uh, idea of learner centered class starts. So, you need to understand uh, certain important points that when you look for learner centered class or you can say when you give your learners equal opportunity to speak or at least a few opportunities to speak, they will find themselves relaxed, they will find themselves comfortable in the situation in the classroom and also they will feel very much connected with what you teach and also they will be able to learn language in a more connected way, in a more approachable way. So, it will no more be a concern or you can say it will no more be a matter of uh, learning a language in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a grammatical way or in a communicative way, it, it, it will be uh, more contextualized and uh, students will be able to develop their critical thinking skills and at the same time they will be able to demonstrate their language uh, uh, accuracy and appropriacy. Now, uh, looking up to the next point, it says that integrating learner centered approach to the classroom. So, as I just mentioned that we need to make a sharp differentiation between the teacher centered and the learner centered classroom. Because in teacher centered what happens that the focus is given on the teacher and learners are consigned to listen to the teachers. However, when it comes to learner centered class, it does not say that the teacher is wrong, rather it is all about the teacher adds on to the learners perspectives. 
So in second language pedagogy, we see, especially in Indian context, that people and students, they come from different background. There is a diversity in your classroom. And also you see that there is a diversity in their age groups. And you also realize that they have different aim for learning this language. They might be using this language in different domains. So it is important to value their perspectives. It is important to understand their point of view so that they uh, incorporate language in their domain and uh, feel themselves integrated with what is being uh, taught. Now the next point as you see it is mentioned that understanding the students motivational and effective factors. Uh, it is important to understand uh, the motivational factors because uh, we need to look up at those things which drives them to learn this language because some of them would be coming to learn language for the purpose of getting job because when they go for interview, interviewers expect them to speak in, in English. So sometimes they look for professional purpose or they would like to learn for the uh, specific purpose. However, there are also learners who want to make their career in the, in, the, in the second language. So what is the motivational force which is driving them to learn second language? That is important to understand because it will help you to uh, give them chances and it will also help you to prepare syllabus. It will also help you to prescribe or you can say uh, give customized material so that they can uh, find themselves enhanced in the purpose that they have been seeking for. And the last point which is mentioned in this slide is respecting and empathizing uh, individual differences. Now it has been a matter of concern for so many decades. Why? Because we see that in uh, old classrooms we have not uh, given uh, uh, our uh, students equal opportunities and also you can say that we have not respected their diversities or you can say that we have not respected their individual differences or uh, sometimes it happens that whatever the speed we take on in the classroom is prescribed or is advised to all. We do not make differences or we do not make certain uh, orders because uh, you know when you see your students coming into the classroom you realize that uh, some students are competent, some are modest when it comes to learning, some are uh, uh, novice, they are just beginning their uh, language learning process. So you need to understand their space and you need to understand their pace as well so that you can collaboratively work together and make them efficient. Remember that the class uh, beat any class especially because we are talking in terms of second language. Uh, we need to make sure that not all individuals are same. Some individuals learn at a higher speed because they already possess a background knowledge. They might be having a good competence level. They might have studied language before. So they might be taking this a step as a later one. However, some of the learners, they might not be having any background knowledge of uh, language and they might be coming as novice. So they want starters, they want brainstormings. So that is the reason we say that we should respect and empathize, empathize individual differences. So dear learners, uh, because learners are important and without learners, language teaching is not possible. Uh, it's not just about uh, the language learners uh, aim and objective, but also their styles, their preferences, their interests, their needs. So keeping in mind these certain things, we need to find out their psychological factors which are responsible for their growth, for their learning outcome. As you see in this slide, it is mentioned uh, that nature of the learning process is something which is important and it is an important factor when it comes to psychological process. So nature of learning process refers to the learning of complex subject matter which is often, uh, which is regarded effective when it is 
intentional uh, process of constructing meaning from information and uh, experience. Uh, you need to identify that what is the, uh, the what is the process that they are going to encounter when it comes to the nature. Are they going to learn through the prescribed materials, or are they going to have audio visual aids as well, or are they going to have some other uh, experiences like they might be taken outside of the classroom, they will be given some exposure or you will be giving some uh, uh, let us say situations in the classroom and asking them to do something. So, you need to understand what nature are you going to put up as far as their learning process is concerned. Now, as you see the second point which is mentioned over here is the goals of the learning process. So, as you know the successful learner over time and with support and instructional guidance can create meaningful coherent representation of knowledge. So, if you have a proper goal that why this learner is going to learn and also what he or she is going to achieve after the language class, then your task become easier. Also, the learners uh, problems would start getting solved. So, uh, you know to make them sit in an interview, to make them efficient in communication skills, to make them enhanced in professional communication or you can say to uh, make them effective in, uh, uh, in, in uh, English language so that they can successfully contribute both uh, locally and globally. Uh, so, that is how you have to identify the goals of the learning process. These goals will help not only the educator, but also the t uh, learner uh, to process learning process easily. Now, the third point which is mentioned over here is the construction of knowledge. So, if there is a construction takes place as far as the knowledge is concerned, the successful learner can link new information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways. So, most of the time we see that we introduce new concepts or you can say we introduce things which are very uh, alien to them, a, uh, then what uh, should be the uh, what should be the stand of the educator? Let me tell you that uh, a teacher should always start with brainstorming and then he or she should take it forward. The other thing is uh, when you introduce a topic which is very familiar to them or which comes from their surrounding itself like you can take up uh, any topic which you can discuss in the class and this topic should be uh, uh, sh should come from their surroundings. Topics should belong th uh, to their uh, uh, to their uh, problems which they have been facing. So, in this way you will find uh, students uh, getting a lot of information and also they will proactively participate in their classroom, they will find themselves active in discussions and they will contribute to the problem so that they can reach out to solution. Therefore, uh, you should be taking care of the topics of the situations we are you are going to give. I can just uh, give you an example here like instead of saying John went you can say Ravi went. So, here you are doing, uh, you, you are actually Indianizing a name and therefore you feel like as if uh, Ravi is one of the candidates who is sitting over here. Students will feel as if Ravi is the person who is amongst us, not a person who comes from a foreign country. So, in this way you can contextualize and bring students in the frame of their own surroundings. Now, as you see there is a one more psychological factor which is mentioned over here, it is strategic thinking. Now, strategic thinking as you uh, realize it is uh, the uh, successful learner who, cre who can create and use a repertoire of thinking and reasoning strategies to achieve complex learning goals. You know, when students start thinking uh, and start performing, they go step by step 
and uh, they learn lesson by collaborative efforts, they cooperate among their uh, peer members and drive to conclusion. They also uh, take uh, consultation from uh, their educator and uh, uh, dive into the matter and then uh, uh, take it, uh, uh, then reach to conclusion. So that is how you know strategy works. It is not that all of a sudden uh, one incorporates a lesson and uh, the lesson becomes ready. If this is the only purpose, then uh, the learning would be consigned to a specific place or it would be consigned to a specific situation. If you want to make your uh, learner efficient in all the situations and if you think that your learner will be able to, uh, to expand him or herself in all the situations, then it is important to uh, start uh, strategic thinking and uh, that is not just important for an educator, but it is also important for, um, for, for, a, for a learner as well. Because if a learner starts uh, strategically, then he or she is likely to uh, induce or you can say he or she is likely to incorporate language uh, in a more efficient way. Then there is one more point which is mentioned over here, it is thinking about thinking. So, for thinking about thinking, I would say high order strategies, you know, for selecting and monitoring mental operations, facilitate creative and critical thinking. This simply uh, brings us to the point that uh, if you give them variety of tasks or you give them variety of uh, uh, activities, then you find your students quite engaged and they would uh, start taking uh, roles which are familiar to them. They will uh, uh, put their uh, input and as a result, you feel that students or uh, I would say learners are coming out with extensive results which are not just the better outcomes, but also you will see that uh, their individualities and their personalities are also getting enhanced. So, let them think what they are thinking, let them critically analyze it, let uh, them put their uh, inputs and see uh, what uh, result do they come with. Now, the another point which is mentioned here as a psychological factor is the context of learning. For context of learning, I would say that learning is influenced by environmental factors including culture, technology and instructional practices. So, when uh, we talk about language, we include culture as well. And let me tell you that language and culture both are inseparable entities, they are interrelated and they are very much, uh, uh, con they are very much interrelated, they, are, they go hand in hand. You cannot separate language from culture and vice versa. So, when you are teaching language, you have to understand that culture also comes with it. Therefore, what are the cultural aspects that you are going to incorporate in your language classroom? So, one of the important things is that you can include a festivals, celebrations and you can uh, one day uh, make your classroom as a spot for celebrating a festival and then you see how students come up with different messages, how they are going to describe their festival in, 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 uh, in different ways. So, that is how you have to create context and you have to ask them to come up with uh, varieties and they will come up with difference of opinions, they will also come up with different interpretations, they will be able to interpret in their own context, in their own situation and you will see that a variety is coming and therefore not just the language but also culture gets expand. That is the reason why we say that psychological factors include context of learning, it includes nature, goals, knowledge, your strategic thinking, thinking about thinking and so on. Since we talk about uh, psychological factors which influence a student's performance and student's growth in classroom and not just the classroom but also outside the classroom. Now we are going to talk about 
what learners should be able to do versus what learners should be taught because this is the point where teachers often uh, uh, often find themselves confused and they uh, think of that what am i going to teach to them and also what they are going to learn from it so how can we interrelate both the aspects and what would be the juncture where both the objectives can meet so in order to sort out these issues let's go through these points and find out how we can uh, help learners to achieve uh, optimum goals and how uh, it can be achieved by uh, teaching uh, through different uh, 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 through different modes at first we see that there is a point called striking balance now what there, are, there there is a diversity when it comes to striking balance so when it comes to striking balance one needs to consider that the objective has to be uh, has to be clear and also that uh, the goal which we are going to achieve should be in our mind moreover the material or the activities or the tasks which we have designed should uh, incorporate the goal that we have been trying to achieve so there should be a balance with regard to these two aspects not only this there is also uh, uh, one other another thing which is also important here is that striking balance should be that, that that a balance should be there when it comes to the participation of the teachers and the learners like as i just mentioned in the previous slides that uh, it shouldn't be only teacher centered or it cannot be you know only learner centered because if it would be only learner uh, that who is going to speak then what role would be the teacher be playing so a teacher should play should be playing the role of uh, of, of of a person who can supply information who can who can advise them who can guide them who can help them uh, uh, expanding themselves in in a better uh, in a better way so you need to sort out what uh, is important and what is not important in other words you can say we should look for prioritizing our things so that we can reach our goals and so that our learners can reach our can reach the uh, course outcomes uh, efficiently and uh, um, extensively the next thing which is mentioned over here is understanding strategies and tactics so uh, we have realized so far that uh, in traditional classrooms there have been lot of uh, uh, emphasize there have been a prioritization of teachers and also there have been a uh, uh, there have been a lot of uh, uh, focus on grammatical accuracy as far as english language is concerned uh, we have realized that people come up with a lot of uh, uh, grammatical accurateness but it, when it comes to effective uh, fluency or you can say when it comes to the use of utterances in social settings that delhims have always tried to put up uh, in the form of uh, communicative competence there we find our students lacking and we will discuss about the methods and strategies in the later sessions well, let me tell you here that we need to make out that how are we going to handle our students because we know that there are a lot of psychological factors which are involved and also not just psychological but social environmental emotional factors that are influencing our learners so which approach are you going to use and which approach do you think is suitable at this particular point of time is important therefore you need to think that how you are going to help your learners and not only this you are also going to ask your learners that in what in, in what in which uh, 
feel they are comfortable. Let us take an example if a learner is uh, not uh, very much habitual in reading books, then you can supply uh, or you can advise some of the videos which would be helpful for him. So, his shift will be towards audio visual uh, aids and he may find uh, language communication or you can say he'll, he or she will be able to find language learning easier. So, uh, therefore, you need to look up at the tactics, you need to look up at the strategies through which you can help learners to enhance their outcome. Nowadays, we talk about communicative language teaching, also we talk about task based. So, these all come, uh, 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 come up with different strategies of teaching, they all have advantages and disadvantages. Some of these scholars say that we need to adopt blended approach of teaching which comprises of all sorts of methods of language teaching. So, it is important for you that you need how you look up to your learners, what is their need, what do they prefer, what is their style of learning and also which strategy will they adopt easily and which tactic would you use when it comes to the improvement, when it comes to the correction because we see that some of the students uh, may not take your uh, feedback seriously. So, how are you going to incorporate? So, you need to identify uh, whether you, the problems of your learners can be sought out globally or it should be sought out individually. Uh, you need, if you think that your learners need individual attention, then you can ask students to look for counseling and there as, a, in, as an educator, as a friend, you can provide uh, the feedbacks that are important, be it in a direct way or indirect way. So, uh, we need to look up at the strategies and tactics in this way. Now, the next point as it is mentioned in the slide, it is making the class learner centered. So, how are you going to make your class learner centered? This is also an important uh, uh, task to take upon and if you make your class uh, interactive, if you approach your learners to speak, to participate or I would say if you encourage learners to put up their perspectives on an issue or on a concern or on a point, then you will feel that you are trying to bridge a gap between the question of what learners should be able to do and what learners should be taught. Then there is inductive and inductive approaches as you see in this, uh, in this slide. Uh, there are two kinds of approaches as it is named over here deductive and inductive. Uh, what happens in deductive? Uh, like we give you a definition, right? And after the definition, we explain the definition and we go on with the examples later, right? So, that is a way of uh, deductive approach. However, inductive approach is different from the, uh, from the deductive one. How? Um, that you give first give example and then you proceed towards the concept that is required to explain uh, uh, to explain the concept. So, most of the time we see that learners while getting into the situation while uh, realizing um, uh, while realizing themselves into the example or when they understand the example efficiently and then they find out the problem and then they understand the concept behind it. So, that becomes quite fruitful and also uh, becomes uh, quite effective as far as the teaching of language is concerned. Then uh, there are, uh, there is another point which is mentioned over here, it is realizing the pedagogical principles. So, in uh, pedagogical, uh, in, a, in, a, in a language pedagogy, you need to think of the principles that you are going to incorporate and uh, if you think that you can respect those principles, you would expect your learners to also resp respect those principles like we are going to incorporate suggestions, like we are going to respect the diversity of each individual, like learners will not be corrected at the same point, they will be corrected later or after every session 
session there would be an individual uh, feedback session or there would be a global feedback session. So, in this way you can set up some principles that will help you and that will help your learners to, uh, uh, to reach the goal and also to maintain the decorum of the classroom. Now, we talked about psychological factors, let us go through the motivational and effective factors. So, the first one as you see is the motivational and emotional impacts. So, uh, motivational and emotional influence the learning and let me tell you what and how much is learned is influenced by the learner's motivation. Motivation to learn in turn is influenced by the individual's emotional states, you can say beliefs or you can say interests, I am writing over here as well beliefs and it is also uh, influenced by uh, interests. Also uh, by goals and you can say the habits of thinking also. Right. So, uh, you know when we talk about motivational and emotional things, we know that uh, we cannot ignore their interests. Okay. If they have a keen interest of learning language and they are so quick or they are getting restless, then you will see that their motivation is driving them to, uh, uh, to, to reach towards the outcome. And you will see some students who have a very specific goal. If they have the, the goal in their hand, they are quite quicker or at least their goals will influence their motivation. And if you see your learners uh, not having goal clear enough, then the outcome may not be as effective as, uh, uh, as it should be. So, it also depends that what they are thinking, what they are thinking and what is their habit of thinking, what is their belief with regard to this language, if they are thinking that this language is going to help them in their career or it is going to help them in research or it is going to help them in their uh, future prospects, then of course, they will find themselves in a better stage. But if they have some confusion or they are coming up with somebody else uh, force or if some other person is making uh, him or her realizing that this particular language is going to help you and so on and it is not their internal uh, uh, realization, then you will find a student uh, seems a little disinterested. So, now it is again up to the teacher how a teacher or you can say how an educator strikes a balance between the learners who aims to achieve the task uh, in a quicker uh, time or the learners who are uh, really not interested. So, you have to take up the class altogether with respecting their beliefs, with respecting their interests and also understanding, empathizing that what has happened to them and why they have been learning this language or what is the purpose of attending their classes. Right. So, uh, now uh, we need when we talk about uh, emotional aspects or you can say emotional impacts, I am reminded of one of the class where I gave a debate, where, where I give a, gave students a task and the task include a debate and students uh, found themselves in favor and they also stood ag uh, against the topic and they were uh, against and they were having good debate. Later at some point of time, I could realize that some students started taking that topic uh, emotionally and they took it personally and therefore, they were not uh, responding to what was being asked rather they started uh, 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 reacting. So, therefore, we have to look up at those factors or we have to look up at those things where students uh, should get space of realizing their emotional health and also they should be able to, uh, to, to put up their views in a more healthy, in a, in a, in a healthy environment, in a more uh, impactful and uh, respectful environment. So, it is one of the responsibilities of the teacher 
or you can say uh, responsibilities of an educator to make the environment healthy, psychologically fit, emotionally wonderful so that students are the best thing to use over here, learners feel comfortable and find themselves merged in the, in the activity. Now there is one important point to mention here is that is intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Like I just mentioned there is something which is driving them, there is something which is bringing them in the classroom. This could be intrinsic or this could be extrinsic motivation. Now coming up what is uh, intrinsic and what is extrinsic uh, motivation? So let's, uh, let's do a categorization first. So intrinsic means that uh, learner, is, learner is coming for the purpose of enjoyment, okay. So he has a passion or he or she has uh, a curiosity to learn language and therefore for the purpose of enjoyment. Uh, the learner is uh, coming up to the classroom and is eager to learn language. Uh, another intrinsic motivation could be purpose. That uh, you know the purpose could be any uh, if he or she is learning this language for any particular task to attain. Therefore, you can say that this is an intrinsic motivation. Then you can think of growth as well some students or you can say some learners are, uh, are, are looking forward to enhance themselves, to upgrade themselves, to move forward with time, to find themselves, um, to make themselves better in communication, to expand their networks and to uh, have uh, uh, better uh, connections with people then they really seek for uh, a language for that purpose we say that their growth is the motivation some learners uh, find themselves curious about the language maybe they might have learned spanish or they might have learned french sanskrit arabic uh, hindi and so on so this becomes a part of curiosity that what is in this language how this language uh, works or they have that kind of curiosity which is uh, which is driving them to learn this language therefore you can say that curiosity is something which comes under uh, under under the intrinsic motivation and therefore they find themselves eager uh, in learning then another thing which is uh, important to mention over here is passion like some students uh, find some learners uh, look for uh, pursue pursue education uh, they pursue jobs uh, they pursue a lot of things for their passion therefore a passion is not for any specific employment or it is not for seeking job rather it is for the purpose of cultivating their soul therefore the passion is something which they always uh, take in and their language learning idea is out of is is of their passion and nothing else then uh, there comes expression As I'm mentioning over here, expression. Now, expression is all about uh, expressing themselves, speaking or writing. If they think that they want to communicate their ideas to a large number of audience, for that matter, they need to learn English language. And uh, similarly, when they want to put up or articulate their ideas at an international platform, for that matter, they are also going to learn English uh, for, for the matter of expression. Therefore, they need a tool to express themselves and that, that becomes the point of expression. Then comes for fun. This is also an, intrins an intrinsic uh, motivation because we have talked about enjoyment, purpose, growth, curiosity, passion, expression and you know for the purpose of cultivating artistic skills language is one of its uh, la language is one of its phase. Therefore, some people learn language 
for the purpose of having fun they do it for artistic skills they do for so some students learn a language for the purpose of having fun they do imitate different accents and they learn language they do uh, and perform artistic careers and therefore they find themselves flourished and nourished when it comes to language or and its usage so these are some of the intrinsic let's now move on to the ext uh, extrinsic uh, motivations what are extrinsic motivations let's try to look up at the first intrinsic motivation could be promotion so imagine that you have got a good job and uh, after getting that job you need to promote yourself and your superior your boss has asked you to become efficient in communication skills so therefore you look forward to enhance your uh, language uh, 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 your language so that you can have a promotion and you may uh, get noticed by a large number of people also uh, you know some people uh, some of the organizations set up that if you have a good command over language this particular language especially in india english language if you have interpersonal skills or if you uh, communicate effectively and you co collaborate with uh, your team members then your pay scale will be uh, will be taken up at a higher raise so pay raises pay raises also extrinsic motivation include bonus okay uh, in indian context people have been demanding for language and they have been demanding for people who can help uh, building networks who can contribute effectively not just in, uh, in 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 the company but they are outside also uh, can can uh, articulate can participate uh, can uh, incorporate uh, uh, diversity and therefore they promote uh, language and uh, they have a special policy that if you have interpersonal skills if you have effective uh, language power then you definitely get a good bonus and you also find lot of benefits so when it comes to benefits let me tell you that more people will come to you more people will ask for your suggestions you will have a broader network you will have not only national but international platforms you will be able to proactively participate in your meetings you will uh, find yourself included in discussions you can raise your points uh, at any desk and also you will find yourself compatible in every situation and you can find utterances in context basically you will be able to interpret and uh, uh, you will be interpret uh, utterances in context in context then you have uh, prizes therefore uh, if you learn language then you get lot of prizes uh, not just that uh, there are competitions Uh, in uh, in having good communication skills but you will find that among your colleagues you are getting uh, you are getting a better enhancement or you can see your learners are uh, actually uh, finding a better position as compared to uh, other team members it basically increases the competitiveness of uh, the working environment now uh, you basically win when it comes to language because you have a tool in your hand you have an instrument in your hand like we have first aid box when we travel similarly when we go to any social networking place we have one important tool in our hand and that is language so this particular thing makes you better uh, confident and moreover these things become a motivation and this motivation comes under the category of extrinsic motivation so these are the extrinsic and intrinsic motivations that are important uh, and if you analyze that your learners are uh, uh, coming up in the classroom for the purpose of intrinsic or extrinsic then you can facilitate language learning easily 
uh, if you know that their uh, aim is a short term or their goal is a short term or if you find that their goal is a long term. So, in this way you will be able to manage uh, your uh, instructions so that they can uh, reach up to their goals be a short term goal or a long term goal efficiently and effectively. Like I, as I just mentioned there is one more point which is, meant, which is uh, written over here in this slide it is effects of motivation on effort. Uh, you know when uh, we find our learners motivation we find that why are they coming in or what is the driving force behind their presence then we uh, then we see their efforts as well we will see that there are differences in their efforts when it comes to learners who are coming up with intrinsic motivation and the learners who are coming up with extrinsic motivation their style is different and therefore their response their participation also different so we so 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 that's a reason why we look for effects of motivation and we have to look upon their efforts that they are making up to to the process of language learning so dear learners after understanding that their motivation affects that their motivation influence their performance after realizing that their diversity matters after realizing that their perspectives may differ from the teacher and also you may realize that their perspectives among themselves differ. So, after going through all these important points let us try to look up at the developmental and social factors that are responsible for their uh, process for the language learning process. So, as you see developmental influence in the slide and as individuals develop they encounter different opportunities and experience uh, different constraints for learning. Learning is basically the most effective when it comes to differential development and uh, this, this, could, this could be physical, intellectual, emotional and social domains which should be taken into account. So, what is their uh, developmental influence as far as their social factor is uh, concerned? You need to think of that what is their intellectual background, uh, what sort of uh, uh, background knowledge do they possess and what sort of growth do they encounter. Then there comes uh, social influence on learning. As you see in this slide, learning is influenced by social interactions, interpersonal skills and communication with others. So, if uh, their surrounding is uh, promoting them or encouraging them to learn second language, then it becomes easier for them or it becomes quite encouraging for them to learn language. However, if the societal factors are not really encouraging or if they are not uh, uh, utilizing uh, 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 their, uh, their, uh, their talent or you can say if the societal, uh, if, if the society is not uh, using the language and then the person would feel isolated or you can also say that the person may not feel uh, language outside of their classroom and that is the reason why the language would remain in a consigned situation and it will not appear outside the classroom. For any effective language learning one needs to understand that learning not only takes place inside the classroom, it, it takes place outside the classroom also. So, if a learner is able to include his uh, learning uh, processes outside the classroom, then uh, the uh, learning becomes easier and effective. So, uh, uh, social interactions matter a lot and also interpersonal relations. Uh, the acquaintances and their encouragement, their, uh, their company all matters a lot when it comes to the language learning. Now uh, coming up to the individual differences, uh, individual differences matter a lot. Let me tell you that the first one is learning and diversity. Learners find themselves learning with different strategies. Uh, they are uh, learning with different approaches 
and they have different capabilities for learning and they are using it as a function of prior experience and heredity maybe so uh, you can say that language and diversity uh, uh, is an integral part of individual difference because uh, learning is most effective when differences in learners linguistic cultural and social backgrounds are taken into account uh, if we don't incorporate their cultural their linguistic their if in fact the developmental their social psychological factors then uh, learning is likely to get deteriorated and then we have standards and assessment therefore to set uh, standards and assessment appropriately it's important to assess the learner and in, uh, assessing the learner would include diagnostic assessment would include achievement assessment assessment in schools we see that uh, teachers uh, do form uh, formative assessment summative assessment to identify that how much learner has succeed, succeeded as far as the learning outcome is concerned uh, diagnostic achievement is done when we start a course or you can say before we start a course through diagnostic assessment uh, educators aim to find the strengths and weaknesses of the learner and achievement test happens at the end of the course while it's, uh, while conducting achievement tests educators aim to identify that how much students or you can say learners have uh, found themselves in a better position uh, then there are formative assessments which tracks which takes a track of the learner's progress and then by the end of a semester or mid semester they uh, conduct summative assessments that gives them a feedback about the success of the course as well so assessment is important to understand their learning skill their growth their speed so this will help you a lot in understanding the learner and also the diversity the heterogeneity that exists in your classroom now moving ahead uh, prior knowledge is important and learners prior knowledge uh, holds an important point because uh, whenever you teach or whatever you teach it always uh, gets interpreted by the prior knowledge therefore when a learner comes into the classroom he or she already has some uh, information or you can say possess a store of information and when you uh, give a new information he or she is likely to uh, put a reference points and therefore drives uh, a new information so prior knowledge is an important thing in um, uh, in uh, linguistic or in english language teaching elt terms we say that it is a top down approach where learner go and uh, find uh, information at the back of the mind and then refer it and find him or herself compatible in the new existing information so prior knowledge is something which cannot be disregarded it is it has always occupied an important position in language learning and teaching then there is a learner's inclination uh, auditory and visual like i said in the beginning it's important to look up where learner is uh, seeking help uh, if you ask your learners to read books right then you may find some of the learners who are not really interested in reading book before you can ask them to uh, go and learn uh, language through audios and videos through music through games so you need to look up uh, the students habits and also their inclination that whether they are auditory they are visual also they are uh, more into reading if they have a more rhetoric kind of inclination you may advise some of the important books which can help them develop their vocabularies nowadays we prescribe students to see ted talks so that they can understand presentation they can develop confidence and also learn language efficiently so uh, in this session we learn that knowing the second language learner can help the educator design tasks and activities efficiently moreover we understood that learner center centered class is important for the modern 
uh, language teaching pedagogy and therefore it encourages learning in an effective way. It encourages participants to take part in activities and express themselves freely. It invites learners to uh, express themselves in a uh, in, in, in an effective way. Therefore, a uh, learner centered class is encouraged, especially in the second language learning pedagogy. Now, it is also important to look for these psychological, social, motivational and individual factors which are responsible for the growth of language learners. Also, it is important to identify the nature of motivation which is uh, behind the language learner and therefore, if we come to know about their intrinsic or extrinsic motivation, then uh, as a teacher we will be able to design our tasks and activities easily and they and also as an educator we will be able to relate uh, our students situation in an effective way. Moreover, it is uh, also important to understand that prior knowledge is important and we should always take uh, their consideration regarding the prior knowledge that they already ha have because it will help the learner absorb new information efficiently and effectively. So, uh, with this we have come to an end of this uh, uh, session. These are the references and uh, we will now incorporate older and younger learners creating uh, profiles. But with this we have come to an end of the session. Thank you very much for joining.